Greetings in the love and in the light of our infinite prime creator, the divine grid programmer. Namaste, namaskar. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to continue with our discussion of the tablets of destiny. However, in the interest of 100% transparency and disclosure, full disclosure, this particular episode of the Ombanda New Earth Education broadcast is not brought to you by Folgers Coffee. Had a little issue with my uh, supply chain. This issue of the Ombanda New Earth Education broadcast is brought to you by G7 Coffee. Strong times two. Two times stronger for vigorous personalities. Ladies and gentlemen, it's still the same instant and adequately heated coffee. It just comes from a different part of the world. And it's got some more horsepower to it. Woo! Alrighty now. The Nibiruian, Nibiruan Tablets of Destiny. Control over the operations of the cities and the activities of mankind. And speaking of the control exerted by the Anunnaki. Control over the operations of the cities and the activities of mankind was exercised through a system of directives and formulas called the Mead in Sumerian. And it's spelled M-E-S. However, it refers to the Tablets of Destiny. And the exact meaning of the word is lost in antiquity. However, it seemed to denote a set of rules or regulations assigned to every entity and phenomenon to keep it operating successfully. Sometimes they appear to be physical objects that one could pick up and carry. Possession of the me gave the owner absolute control of a certain aspect of life or behavior. Perhaps they were something like our present day computer chip on which data and operational orders were inscribed and were used to activate a piece of equipment. In the myth, Inky and the world order, the, the Mies, the Tablets of Destinies, appear to control an aircraft under the command of Inky. In this story, Inky is described as the Lord who drives the great Mies, the Tablets of Destiny. The Tablets of Destiny were in the possession of Inky and were released gradually and sparingly to benefit mankind. Our primary source of information on them is the story Inanna and Inky, where civilization is divided into over 100 elements, each of which required a me to keep it functioning, a Tablet of Destiny, a computer chip, if you will, with instructions coded on it. Some 60-odd ones are readable in this myth, and they include, for example, kingship, priestly office, wisdom, peace, counsel, instant coffee, judgment, falsehood, art, musical instruments, weapons, libel, prostitution, law, and the destruction of cities. This myth concerns a successful attempt of Inanna to extract some of these Mies from Inki. According to the story, Inki had prepared a sumptuous feast to entertain the beautiful but ambitious granddaughter of Anu. Seeing that Inki had drunk too much wine and was inebriated, the opportunistic Inanna saw her chance and asked Inki for seven major tablets of destinies to which he foolishly agreed. These Tablets of Destiny embrace the functions necessary for running a city, such as how to manage a temple, the art of warfare and weapons, music and the arts, scribeship and mathematics, and many wood and metal crafts. Later, when Enki sobered up, he realized what he had done and sent his chamberlain by swift boat of heaven to pursue the fleeing Inanna and retrieve the Tablets of Destiny. 
Inanna managed to outwit Enki's messenger, however, and arrived at her adopted city of Uruk, much to the, acclaim, uh, the acclaim of the citizenry. Inanna boasted that for all practical purpose, she was now a ruler, for she had the official trappings and authority of a monarch. These tablets of destiny would not only confer authority to the owner, but absolute power as well, by making the owner of certain tablets of destiny impregnable to weapons. This attribute is described in the Sumerian story of the myth of Zu. As a god serving as retainer to Enlil, Zu plotted a palace revolution by trying to seize control of the tablets of destiny that Enlil had carelessly left unattended. It was previously suggested that the culprit who attempted the coup d'etat was probably none other than Nanar or Sin, Ishtar. As Enlil was taking a bath, Zu conceived the idea of stealing the Tablets of Destiny, contending that these divine decrees would give him control over the Anunnaki and mankind and place him in command of the Pantheon. Zu made good his boast and escaped with the Tablets. The Pantheon was thrown into complete disarray by this alarming development. Enlil declared that someone must retrieve the Tablets of Destiny to prevent Zu from usurping the authority of the gods. But it seemed that control of the Tablets of Destiny also made Zu impregnable, giving him the ability to deflect and nullify all weapons sent against him. Exploding arrows, sounding suspiciously like rocket missiles, were launched against him, but were deflected by some sort of force field around the mountain redoubt that Zu had fortified. Finally, Inki forged a new special weapon in his laboratory. It was given to Ninurta, the military aide of Enlil who finally defeated Zhu and brought him back to the airship for trial. Thus ended the worst threat ever experienced by the Sumerian ruling deities. The presence of similar symbols of authority is mentioned in the scriptures where it is often stated that the possession of certain divine names conferred extraordinary power. Were the tablets of destinies of the Sumerians the same as the divine names of the scriptures? When Enoch the antediluvian patriarch was deified upon his ascent to the heavenly abode. He was given 70 names according to the Hebrew apocalypse of Enoch. Now, two of the names I can tell you right now are Metatron and Thoth. Thoth, the Atlantean, all the same energy package. Also called the first book of Enoch. This document is believed to have originated in Babylonian Jewry and is attributed to the rabbi Ishmael. No, not Ishmael Perez. I don't know if he's a rabbi, but he knows a lot. The rabbi Ishmael, the renowned Palestinian scholar who died in 132 AD. These 70 names conferred power and authority on Enoch, second only to the chief deity. The divine names gave Enoch the power to smite kings, elevate the humble, subdue rulers, confer wisdom, and make judgments and control the procession of time and the seasons. Presumably, the latter meant the authority to adjust the calendar when necessary, such as when worldwide catastrophe made the old calendars obsolete. Well, folks, that's a little bit of a more insight into the myth of Zoo, the, the Tablets of Destiny. Um, hopefully you caught the last uh, the two videos I made uh, about the myth of Zoo and where I discussed kind of like how I hold knowledge as the supreme um, pursuit, if you will. Um, hit that subscribe button, stay tuned. We got more exciting uh, fact-filled and um, you know, video episodes coming your way from the Umbanda New Earth Education Center. Namaste, namaskaram. Oh yeah, and much more coffee too. Four vigorous personalities. <laughs>